Then there's producer responsibility, which is, is clearly something which happens across Europe and is something which we do a little bit in the UK. But I think there's a strong view that um, that's going to come out and feature much stronger, stronger in the circular economy package. And what that means is effectively producers taking more responsibility and in, uh, funding directly into um, programmes that are run, both not just around recycling but around litter as well. So it's interesting to see that it came up and, and was probably the one that people thought was probably the, the, the most important. Um, it's always a controversial one because clearly industry recognise their responsibility but also recognise it's a shared responsibility and so the, the key issue for everyone is cost. Yes they're prepared to do it but it's, they want to do it at a realistic and sensible cost and that cost is shared shared fairly across all potential sectors. Standard collections are something that's come up throughout the day. Um, we are, my personal view is that we need to move towards harmonising collection. That doesn't necessarily mean standardised collection. We need to respect the fact that different local authorities have different needs and different housing types. But for me, what is actually of fundamental importance is absolutely doing what you said, is clearing this confusion and it's all about communication. And our experience, I mean, we as an organisation run probably the industry's largest behaviour change programmes with Metal Matters and Every Can Counts, which have been hugely successful, getting very high recovery or increasing capture rates significantly, up to 24% in, 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 in one of the ones we ran last year in Shropshire. And that's all about clear, simple messages. And doing it in a way that engages with the local, with the householder, I think too often, uh, householders receive communication from local authorities and because it's from the local authority they switch off straight away. So what we've done is develop new creative ways of communicating these messages which seem to be working. So for me, absolutely, we need to be working together to communicate to householders to reassure them and to overcome this confusion and really to demonstrate to them that what they do or can do really does make a difference and is really worthwhile. But we need to do that in a very simple way, and not just once, but we need to have programs which continually reinforce those messages. As, as we discussed during the panel session, it's very topical in Scotland at the moment, and it's very interesting because on the panel we had Dominic, Dominic Hogg from Unomia, who, who produced the report for the Scottish Government on the potential introduction of deposits in Scotland, and clearly that, that report came out quite positive. Um, from our point of view, we are very firmly from the camp that yes deposits work in certain situations and, and we work with deposit systems as an industry in different parts of Europe but we don't believe a deposit system is right in Scotland and certainly not in the UK. We have the, the collection infrastructure there in our curbside collection systems which yes it's not perfect but it is the envy in Europe in many ways because there are very few countries in Europe where you have the opportunity to have your recycling collected from your householders. We need to work together to make that work better and that's all about what we've just talked about. It's about education and communication and we need to be putting money into that not into inventing a totally new system which ultimately is going to rip the high value materials out of the local authority collection systems. So push the cost of collection up and potentially have a, um, a negative impact on the collection levels for other materials. And it's very interesting to look at those countries across Europe. And if you look at Eurostat, the countries that have deposit systems, yes, they have very high recycling rates for beverage packaging, but their overall recycling rates are actually pretty low. And with the exception of Germany, they're all actually below the current UK recycling rate and also the recycling rate in Scotland. So we could do put something in which fundamentally looks as though to have a positive impact on a relatively small fraction of the, of the challenge uh, and could actually undermine absolutely everything else that we're doing with all of the other things that we collect and push costs up for local authorities and also undoubtedly for, some, for consumers. So no, it's something that yes we work with them, yes they work in some instances but it certainly isn't right for Scotland and certainly isn't right for the UK.